It is The Riot on Radio U. Happy when we're doing this podcast. It's Tuesday. And so today in the podcast, uh, you know, I left some of our stuff out. The show actually started with us trying to remember what day it was and what we'd actually <laughs> talked about and what we hadn't talked about. You didn't put that in there? <laughs> yeah. Hey, just like everybody else, these days are rolling. Yeah. Rolling together. We have no idea. So uh, today in the podcast, we talk about not working out. Uh-huh. Uh, Mario Galaxy rumors for I'm Nikki. I'm excited about that. I, I It's June, isn't it? June or July for the actual announcement. So Maybe. we have some time. Uh, we have the Yale Happiness class. We talk about Joe Biden, who has a podcast now. Yep. Uh, Spirit Airlines, Modern Warfare 2, James Corden, an ASIC sneaker launch. What our take is on April Fool's this year. Uh, and I, we must be thinking a lot about working out and eating because here's a, str- a way to stop stress eating. We talk about how much I'm missing soda fountains. But see, we we always talk about food and drinks, but normally it's like, what's the new hot food item coming out? Right. And I feel like this is just all still related around our stay at home and the virus stuff. It all just wraps around it. Yeah. So there's, it's not as, it's not as fun. Yeah. I want to say, hey, to Mark, did you see his text? I did not. He has just been released from quarantine. Hey. He's, he had a positive test result for COVID-19, but now he's out. Oh, he's good. Yay. Awesome. Oh, we're so excited. Sorry if Mark will hear this in the podcast. Congratulations, dude. That's awesome. And you are officially the first person that I know in our audience that, that has had it. Had it. Mm. So um, I actually had somebody ask me, has anyone in your audience said they have it? Mm-hmm. And I said, no. I've only seen a few no people on, no. on Facebook who have said that they've gone to the doctor with their symptoms. And instead of testing them, they just send them home, they just send them home yeah. saying it's a probability you have it. Here's what you need to do. Right. Uh, but no one who's had like a positive actual test. Oh, I don't you do have not that want test. that test. They stick that thing in your nose. Like way back there. No, thank like you. As far as I'm concerned, it looks like they're actually touching your brain. It's uh, <laughs> what is it? The mummy thing when they when you they used to yeah, that up your nose or whatever, pull your well, brain out. What they out. do is they push your nose way up because here, let me tell you, as someone that's had a lot of sinuses experience, there's a way bigger empty space in your head than you think. And so, and it's not a stupid thing. No, it's real. <laughs> there just is space. It's like they jam this thing in all the way back into the back of your when sinuses you see someone, and get a they, wipe. And it's so bad because it's like they have to hold it there and just make sure. And you see the person being like, oh, "Are we done? <laughs> Why is this up my nose?" Yeah. I when I had my deviated septum repaired, yeah, I had a few moments where. <laughs> You're just like, how far back does it go? <laughs> Aren't you touching my brain? <laughs> what are you doing? So are I, you I sure you're that. a doctor? I know, but you don't want that test. No. I don't want that test. Mark, did you have that test? Well, he must have. Must have, yeah. He said that he tested positive for COVID-19. So, <sighs> well, hey, man, uh, welcome out. I yeah. hope that uh, you have a great day. Don't forget to text us. Say hello, 877-2-RADIO-U. Put that you're a podcast listener and your name, and we'll see that when we're in the studio next. And you can check out Radio U Riot, our Facebook page, where you can watch yesterday our special after show show where we did a Riot food fight with a bunch of cereals. All right. Anything else? Enjoy the day. Bye. What you're about to hear will live on the internet forever. Sorry, internet. The worst of the Riot podcast. I mean, is anybody else struggling with exercise in the middle of all this? Oh, yeah. It's real hard to have a schedule. I just and not like with uh, other things like ice cream. <laughs> Nikki, I've been meaning to talk to you about your ice cream thing. I know. I, it's all gone. But I had I a schedule there for a while. <laughs> your, uh, like, your animated gif from last night of the guy from The Simpsons eating the ice cream. I was just like, yeah. All my ice cream. We bought ice cream before the uh, stay-at-home thing started, and then we've eaten it all, and it was supposed to last longer, (laughs) and it's all gone. And I know I can get some. I'm just disappointed that we went through that so fast. Yeah. I just, I know. I didn't want to get on a, a scale. Like, I know I'm gaining weight, and I need to start i've got to exercise i but like i keep saying i'm gonna start training for a 5k tomorrow Mm -hmm. and i don't know when in my life i have ever been so just like eh, whatever towards exercise it's like it's a very hard time to have a schedule i can't get myself out the freaking door well i'm just like you're not supposed to that's why you're getting conflicting messages (laughs) conflicting messages i mean you're allowed to go out and run or walk but you just don't know know. (laughs) i need to be out there i need to be 
Getting some sunshine. Doing stuff for something and whatever. So I don't know. It's so, like struggle, struggle. But Nikki and I are here. <laughs> With Obadiah and Nikki on Radio U. I got to say hey to Izzy uh, with this text message. I love it. Trying to catch up, but dang it, half hour of you guys eating cereal. Oh, from yesterday? Which was our (laughs) post show yesterday. We did an after, after riot show where we ate cereal. Izzy, I hate to tell you, the cereal part didn't even last a half hour. That was just us hanging out. If I had known it would be that long, I would have watched it at work. How (laughs) How does the saying go? Boss makes a dollar, I make Make a a dime. dime. (laughs) That's why I watch the riot on company time. Nice, Izzy. That's a liner or a shirt right Right there. there. (laughs) Right there for sure. Well, we're glad you're catching up. You can check out our riot after after show yesterday with our cereal food fight at Radio U or Radio U Riot, either of our Facebook pages. Okay, Nikki, are you ready? Yeah. Now, it's not official yet. It's not official, but it's exactly what you think. This is Mario the, Galaxy? the Mario Brothers 35th anniversary. It is. It is. And according to pretty much everything that I'm looking at all over the internet, the rumor is that at E3 this year. There's going to be one? There, No. There would have been an announcement from Nintendo that for the Mario 35th anniversary, yeah. they were going to remaster and re-release a ton of Mario games on the Switch. <sighs> on that list, what? according to the rumors, yes. is Super Mario Galaxy. Yay! What about the other one? What about two? Uh, it doesn't say that. Okay, but we got to start somewhere. But Yay! you start somewhere. Yay! Oh so, my gosh, I love the Mario Galaxy games. Theoretically... Paper Mario, Mm -hmm. Super Mario 64, and Super Mario Galaxy. And again, remember, this is all rumor. This is not confirmed. It's not official. It doesn't matter. Let's just make it it good. Um, That is coming along with, oh, okay, uh, Super Mario 3D World, this says. And that they are going to be part of the Super Mario 35th anniversary. So they say that uh, they're probably doing a Nintendo Direct in June, and that's when people expect it to get announced. Ooh. But this was... I'll pay whatever it costs for Super Mario Galaxy 2. Oh. I'll pay the Switch tax. I'll pay uh, whatever is the Mario thing, whatever it costs. I see. It's funny that you say that because I started thinking about what would I be willing to pay yeah. for a remastered version of Super Mario Galaxy. The answer is 20 maybe. Oh, you'd pay a little bit more. Maybe $30. If it was two, like, which I like more than, than Super Mario. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'd still pay it just to show my support so that they would eventually send out Mario Man, Galaxy Nintendo 2. Nintendo has gotten so much of my support, support over the years. Just to encourage them, let so. them know we're still out here. I also don't know, like, would I enjoy the game as much on the Switch? That's because we played, what See, was it? I would put it in the dock yeah. and use my, I have a pro controller. Why? Because when Zelda came out, I had to have a pro controller. And by had to have, I mean it in the way your dad says it to you when you've wasted money. You had to have it. I've been tempted to get the gray or the yellow one yeah, to okay. get the light switch. Yeah. And I could, we could spend some hours <laughs> playing this up. game. Okay. All right. But I haven't done that yet. And I don't know if I need no, to. Let me tell that's, you what. That's the, Here's what happens. That's you the get... isolating part of me that's like, oh, it looks good. And everybody got all the cool Animal Crossing ones. You got Trump bucks coming <laughs> and, and you're locked in the house. And everything sounds good. Which is the problem, (laughs) which is why I'm going to be eating ice cream and playing this in June if this is still how life is. Yeah. Well, but remember, this is not this probably won't come out until the fall. If it does, I'm just telling you on a high note. This is a rumor. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. (laughs) I mean, obviously, it's a rumor, but I'm sure it's true because, I mean, they released Super Mario Galaxy on Android devices in China. Yeah. So I am sure that they will do this. I loved Mario Galaxy 2 so much that I don't own a Wii and I haven't for quite some time, but I borrowed my parents' Wii so that I could play the game. Well, I bought Nick, I bought you a copy. Of yeah, it. I got it, but I didn't want to take my Wii. Like my parents still play Wii bowling every so often, yeah. so I one day they were like, "Hey, are we gonna get it back?" Dude, Nikki's so dad. Thought, oh, here, Nikki's you can dad is it. a wee bowling machine. Machine. Well, he's a good bowler. Just he's in a life great too. bowler and a great wee bowler. So that's um, where I get it from. No, you do. 
I just I'm a natural. It uh, uh, just uh, runs in the family. It does. <laughs> okay, great. Well, Mario news for this June or whenever that comes out will be the news. Fingers crossed. I will. There's a lot of things Nintendo pumps out that I'm not buying. I'm buying that. We're ready for that. I'm on board. What's worse than the worst of the riot? The worst of the riot podcast. Yeah. You did this to yourself. Podcast. Riot. Radio U. So this is not the same, but um, I was thinking last night about a time when I was in college in which due to family sickness that eventually led to a funeral, I was on the other side of the country for two weeks when I was supposed to be gone for a weekend. Uh, And so it was this odd thing of like it really knocked me off my schedule and like all this stuff and like it really messed with me and when I got done with it and I got back to life it was just like man what am I doing like I gotta get a hold of myself I wish I had used that time better sure well you know what here's a chance for you to use that time a little bit better take a free online course in happiness there's a lot of um, schools that are offering some free things yeah so you can do what they call an audit which means that you take a class for free you get no credit for it the professor will not grade your papers they won't anything but you can still participate iTunes used to have or maybe they still do a whole section for those um do you remember that I do I what was it iTunes University something like it was maybe more pushed a year or, or a few years ago but uh, yeah, they had a whole section where I, you could just listen in. iTunes U on the App Store. So, oh, heck yeah. There's like, a lot of stuff to keep you busy. It's <laughs> it's a whole thing if you want to get in on that. Um, so there's that. But uh, we mentioned this in our online stream yesterday, but we didn't talk about it on the show. Yale is offering its, they say, mega popular happiness course. Like, it is one of the single, like, most like requested it made a huge splash when it debuted a couple of years ago and everybody talks about it and this is the class now it's technically called it's not called happiness it's called the science of well-being and you can enroll oh it starts today Uh oh you got to get on it (laughs) hey you know what you want to be like you were with your other classes (laughs) just late getting in (laughs) They say it takes 20 hours to complete, about Mm -hmm. three hours a week. I'm enrolling. Let's do it. And you can pay if you want to have your stuff turned in and get like a certificate of a completion at the end. But if not, just take the class. You know, I'll just take the class. Here we go. Three hours. Something went wrong. Let's try again. Well, maybe everybody's also there at the same time late trying to get in. I'm trying to. It wants me to. Let's see. Sign up. You can sign in with Apple and Facebook, but not with Google. Yeah, no, whatever. Um, maybe I don't want one more Facebook thing. Well, then just face- use your, your Apple ID. Then Facebook will be like, oh, look how happy you are now. Buy this. <laughs> you don't want your ads to you reflect like, that? You like books on happiness? <laughs> Here, have a book on happiness. But yeah, check out. I'm sure there's way more online, but uh, the you part, the university part of iTunes, what? you can find some stuff. Your Apple ID is being used to sign into a new device. Oh, here we go. It's uh, never, never just simple, is it? Isn't. it? There, the whole point is I'm supposed to use that to make it simple, but that just has become even more complicated. And it's for something that'll help have happiness, and now you're frustrated. Just angry. <laughs> just angry. Well, that'd be cool. Let us know how it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it starts today. They say three hours a week. I I got three hours. You sure? You don't want to commit too early. I'll tell you what's going to end up happening. You're not going to do it? (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Full course, no certificate. There we go. So somebody wasn't willing to spend the $49. How much or how many weeks is it? Uh, I can't see now because it's 20 hours. So at three hours a week, six or seven weeks. It's not bad. So... There you go. So that's I'm, the happiness one from Yale, but there's tons of others. Well, you know what? I'm feeling happier now because now I have something to ignore. And I always like to have, <laughs> and what did we talk that about? like how it used to be? What did we talk about? That what we really wanted was the freedom to say no, <laughs> uh, even though, you know, we like, I want to go to the movies. No, but don't tell me I can't. No, they say that you're supposed to have these days mimic your real daytime was sort of life like it used to be Mm -hmm. and you were always signing up and we weren't doing things so this is fine it's perfect perfect feels good i love what's happening right (laughs) now. or you could actually just take the class and you might get some good stuff out of it i'm super happy right now man it's working giving every novelty food the publicity it so blatantly desires it's the riot on radio you Now, I'm not speaking super authoritatively on this, but I feel like from my personal perspective, 
the presidential campaign, which was like the most important thing ever, has been weirdly put on hold. Now, it's not. It is not on hold. Mm-hmm. They, people are still campaigning. Like, it's still happening. But as just uh, fly on the wall, Joe on the street, whatever, to me, it just seems to have passed out of the news a little bit. No, I, I, I think we a lot of us agree with you. Which is really bad for people that want to get elected because mm-hmm. the president is currently getting a ton of screen time, whether you like him or not. And then you have... Most likely, though not yet there, Joe Biden, probably the Democratic nominee, probably. Um, And he is now doing a podcast. Oh. So if you want to find out everything that the president's doing wrong, it's in Joe Biden's podcast. (laughs) I think it would probably be skewed a certain way. Um, (laughs) I don't know how healthy that would be for a podcast, depending on how often it is. Well, according to this, his first podcast interview was with Ron Klain, who was uh, in charge of Ebola response in the United States. And it's about how Trump was not doing uh, the right job or doing the job right or something like that. So um, I is that going to be the theme for each week? Well, you know what? (laughs) Here's the difficulty is is that uh, I and this would be again, you got to take your party whatever just like take one step back and look at it from a 50,000 foot view kind of thing uh, which is more than one step but (laughs) whatever party is in power during a crisis they get a chance to potentially look very good because a lot of times with politics you're arguing over different things but this is a chance for people to just watch them do the job yeah they're just doing the job and so they're not talking about their stances on different issues they're just doing the job that is a tendency to make them not always, but sometimes look a lot better. And it makes the person that's trying to criticize them Uh, look like someone that doesn't care about what's going on. So if you're on the other side, you have to really watch what you're doing at the moment because then you could look way worse. It makes it hard to criticize. It seems like you're criticizing the situation. Exactly. Yeah, okay. It, it, It becomes a much touchier subject. For it to be happening in election year makes it even tougher. And, of course, some people are like, that's the point. It's all a lie. You know, I, it's all Listen, out there. we are already handling so much. I don't want to handle any more of that. Oh, just yeah. give everybody a break and then bring it back once things are settled down more. Just, well, you know. But for those of you that are following along and are wondering what's going on, some people have said, like, hey, Where did Joe Biden go? All of a sudden, we don't hear from Joe Biden anymore. He has started a podcast, which, you know, for him is is a good idea. It gives him a chance to easily uh, talk to his constituents without having to necessarily be on camera. So he can still communicate, (laughs) um, even though it's a little harder for him to get press in what's going on nationally. (laughs) We do our worst of riot podcast. You know, we do. We take that stuff from our show and stuff. But I don't. There's just a lot of older people in politics and with podcasts or just letting him talk for long, long, long amounts of time doesn't always well have the best outcome to where it's like, I don't know, like how many people are putting this on and are they writing it for them as they would any older politician? I don't imagine it's live. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's edited. That's the nice thing. They can <laughs> they can edit that thing. out. Probably. So, um, and hopefully they don't release numbers on it because. The last thing we need is our current president to have numbers to brag about and or oh, squash for, down. Yeah, for all that. That, uh, that. that one got me. We've got an archive of everything stupid the riot has ever said at your fingertips. This is the worst of the riot podcast. So, Nikki, uh, tomorrow is April Fool's Day. It is. Talk about, I don't not, think anybody should do anything. <laughs> not this year, guys. I, unless you're uh, self-isolating or if you're like in a place with all your family and maybe you haven't been around in a while and you do something fun. But even that, I don't think it's the right time this year. I don't. Now, some people today, you're going to be online and you're going to find articles that say things like why we need April Fool's Day more than ever. <laughs> That's, Why we should have it. That article writes itself. And you know what? I could write that article right now. Like, pay me by the word, and I will write you an article that's all about how when it's time like this that are down and a good prank can actually reinforce a relationship. And, like, just all of, I could write the whole thing right now. I don't think it's the right time. No, I agree with you. I, I just don't. I think it's time to uh, you acknowledge it, maybe share great stories of April 
fool's pranks in the in the past. Watch some TikTok. Save it for next year. Look at Reddit. Uh, you know, like the what could go wrongs, whatever. But it's not the year for it. Even though I, it could be just because we don't do too many pranks, so we're not really into that. I uh, no, I you know I have never been that guy. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not a prank guy. Some people are. I was at a uh, an event a couple of years ago, and they were these people came to me. They were so excited to pull this prank, and they were sure I would want to be in on it. And I was like, yeah. I actually told them I was like, <laughs> I know why you asked me, and I I really appreciate it. But that's not really my thing. I feel like we just grew up with pranks being uh, some sort of internet company or like uh, thing being like, well, we're closing down or oh, we're open again or something like an online prank. Yeah, okay. Where they would be like, here, this item is is only $2 when it's normally way more. And you're like, right. oh, we fooled you. And it's nothing the same. So let's just, I, I'll just tell you this. I'm not going to be participating and I don't want someone to force me to participate just that's just not okay i agree with you but it's good to know that it is still tomorrow it is tomorrow so Mm -hmm. if you um you know whatever but like it's not uh if i had a radar station and right now it was bing bing, (laughs) it's not on that radar most for most people i don't think it is either it's not in the outer marker It's just nowhere. It's good to know it's there, but we're not really feeling like it's the right time to do anything with it. Yeah, but if you want to pay me to write an article about why it is the right time. (laughs) You can do that. I can write that, too. (laughs) The whining, the loathing, the insightful commentary on postmodern historical doctrine. Okay, maybe not the last one. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. I got to tell you, I've never flown Spirit Airlines, and uh, sometimes I get frustrated with them because I'll have some Google fare alerts that are set. So, like, if a fare drops below a certain point, I'll get an email letting me know, like, hey, your route, the yeah. price has dropped. Uh, the thing about Spirit Airlines is they often I will get alerts like it's only this much. And then you look like they are a legit discount airline. Yeah. So you don't get. Uh, I've seen the reviews. Have you like you get nothing? <laughs> you can't take your luggage on. That's extra. You barely and I can even, get your you. You're on there. <laughs> I'm not even sure you can take a carry on without paying extra. Um, you might get a personal item, which is not the same as a carry on. Sure, uh, but that that's it. You're that's all you get. Well, and again, it's very budget airline. Yeah, and so here we have the story, and this is where it comes down to. I need to know what your price is. William is 34 years old. He was on a Spirit Airlines flight from Phoenix, Arizona to Seattle, Washington. Uh, and he had something happen. Um, the person next to him uh, threw up all over him. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Um, and uh, they were like, we're so sorry this happened. Here is a fifty dollar voucher. Now that's a lot of money, though, to that airline. <laughs> Man, that's that's they Hawaiian so di- back. They're so discounted that like, that's you don't a even lot. Know. You don't even know. <laughs> I mean, what are they supposed? It's not like it's not like they threw up on them. It's the guy. Well, that's that's a good point. So, what does the guy do? That's actually William says. I realize it's not their responsibility. They he threw up. It wasn't them. But he says that they. He's not happy with their response. Well, if they were rude with like the cleanup process and didn't help that way, then I could see maybe wanting a little compensation if they didn't do the job of helping him take care of the situation because it was on their plane. You should enjoy this. Uh, His shoes, socks and pants were soaked. Oh, with it. Oh, that is so bad. Have you guys ever been on a plane when someone throws up? There's a lot of panic. (laughs) But no one can do anything. They're just moving around in well, circles. That's what those little baggies are supposed to be for. <laughs> oh, not everybody makes it into that. Not, well, that's. I mean, maybe that's part of why he's mad. Now that I don't know, but you know, spirit is so discounted. Did they have a baggie? Maybe you don't get one of those. Maybe, maybe there was no baggie. I remember I was looking at a flight for someone on that airline, and I've never flown there. But they were saying how when I looked at the. Reviews, customer service wasn't the best. Wasn't at the top. So maybe it was something along those lines. Yeah. So um, it, uh, you know, it they they didn't even change planes. They just came and cleaned it up. Well, sure. They That's just fine. throw that. Remember when you were a kid in uh, school and they just throw the sawdust stuff on it when someone throws up? So 
Uh, it I, fixes it. It's fine. Well, hey, what was that? Uh, you've been on flights where people throwing up. Me too. They were like, one, the guy threw up in midair. So they just like put the stuff on it and then put like a rubber mat on. Yeah. And they were just like, yeah. Just like, don't walk. A, when we were landing one time, the, the lady in the row behind me threw up and she threw up into the aisle way. And, but all the airline uh, stewardess people were hooked up and because we were actually about ready to land. We were like five minutes from it. Yeah. So they're like, hey, can you come clean this up? And they're like, nope, we can't do it. And they were just yelling back and forth at each other while there's just throw up everywhere. Yeah. And then everybody who got off the plane <laughs> had to step over it. <laughs> it was just like, okay. <laughs> so, I, but again, someone throws up on you on a plane. Mm-hmm. They offer you $50. I you just, just take wanna, it and go? I would. I just would want to get You just take it. it and go? I would just want to leave. I just want to get out of there. Man, I feel like I... I what else are they going to give you? A hundred? Fine. Hold two, out for that. Two fifty? Yeah, okay. Hold out. A little bit more. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But I told you, 50 bucks for that airline is probably a lot more money than compared to like a bigger airline. Well, I logged into flights.google.com the other day, and you know how it would be like... Uh, like, here's what it costs to go to Vegas, mm-hmm. uh, L.A., and Honolulu or something. And Vegas was like $29 round trip or something. It was absurd. Yes, but most of the hotels are closed down to where you oh, have there's to, nothing to do there. You have to quarantine in a room, and they won't let you out. So yeah, you have the low airfare, but you can't you do what? anything. They still got slot machines at the airport. airport. <laughs> And the gas station. No, you're just doing the slots on your phone or something in the room. <laughs> Whatever. Obadiah and Nikki tried their hardest. And that's what really matters. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. I don't see any indication that it has happened yet, but the big old rumor yesterday, like yesterday afternoon or something, there was a trailer uh, for. Uh, what is it? The Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 remaster. It's been rumored basically forever. Uh, and the trailer leaked yesterday afternoon, and everybody seems to think that it's going to come out today. Oh, really? Yeah, it'll be digital only. The trailer? I'm sorry, no, 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 the, no, game. the game. The game itself. Uh, so the rumor is that it's just going to show up today sometime online, digital only, and it's campaign only. So you'll pay... I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm guessing it's gonna be 25 bucks. It might Maybe be the case, 30. but I do feel like they are rushing or finally releasing certain things that they would have would have waited a little bit longer yeah. uh, because a lot of people are home and having the time and needing a distraction. Yeah, you're inside. You've got. It's not that you have nothing to do, but I think it's not a matter of having nothing to do. You actually have, man. You the could same do amount a, of stuff, probably. You could do a deep dive on your crap and be busy forever. Like, you got books you've never read, movies you always said you'd watched, get like Netflix, 100 million hours of stuff you've never looked at. Well, they want an, a shiny new distraction. Exactly. And gameplay is up a lot because people are turning to that. Well, I saw Steam, which is the online uh, PC gaming platform. I, I know there are others, but they hit their record again. They keep hitting records for most concurrent players. And it's up over 23 million this time. So 23 million playing at one time on Steam That's is a, a lot. lot. A lot. So the rumor is that'll come out today. Uh, some people are saying that campaign is only like six hours long or something. I don't know. I thought it looked cool. I'm part of the problem there. I said it. So it means I thought it looked cool. It'll only last you six hours to play through the whole game. That's what they're saying. But yeah. can you play online with others to make no. it go longer? This is just no, a campaign. It's just, it's just a campaign. I, you know what? I would do it. It's still, still worth it for the six hours. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can stretch that out. It's fine. You know, play, to play. <laughs> it's got that level in it where the terrorists are on top of Burger Town or whatever. Like, I don't know. I always thought that was funny. Like, I don't know why. I just didn't. So like, that should be maybe today. Maybe. Total, total rumor. Like, we don't know. This is the second video game rumor we have reported on today. The other being, if you didn't hear it, There are rumors that later this year we're going to get for Mario's 35th anniversary, the Super Mario Galaxy reboot, or excuse me, remaster Mm -hmm. that would come out for the Nintendo Switch. Along with some other Mario uh, remastered stuff for the Switch, but probably not to the fall. Yeah. So if you were like, I'll get that. No, it's... (laughs) You're going to be waiting quite some time on that one. We're still very much in rumor territory here. Where do you go when you need someone to listen to your problems and give you a big hug? Not here, obviously. This is The Riot on Radio U. You know what is probably hitting me? This is, okay. 
We're about to get into some first world problems here. <laughs> well, just everybody hold on. But do you know what I miss during this whole quarantine thing? What? I can't get a fountain pop anymore. Oh, the soda things are closed. Yeah. No fountain pop, guys. You used like, to have I those could... a lot to where you're missing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I miss it, dude. Do you have the cup, or can we just no, pretend? No, I never, uh, like, I got rid of... Can we get one of... out of the trash? <laughs> Maybe. It's going to be like, listen, I'm not here for the soda. I just wanted this cup. I just need to take it home, and I'll drink out of it. Why don't you just go it. ask for a cup, and then you can grab something else, and we can and, pour it in and make it feel like you're at the fountain machine. And I could go to a drive through and get a soda. Yeah, you but could. But I lose creative control. At that moment, because I like to, you know, like you get some Diet Mountain Dew in there and then maybe, you know, you decide you want a little spritz <laughs> of uh, cherry well, or you, maybe you want to, you know, there, there are options. Did you try, like, say the White Castle has a freestyle in the lobby? Are you allowed to go in and do that if you do carry out? I don't know. You'll have to check. I don't know. And then you have to ask yourself that porous plastic screen. <laughs> Do I want to put my finger on it? I don't know. It it depends on I mean, how I much carry, you want it. You know, Nikki and I are essential personnel, so we're out in the world. And uh, I got I carry gloves with me now. You should. So just I in case. No matter how this goes, there, we might keep those around with us even after all this is settled. Yeah, it's something, right? Well, so, let's go through a drive-thru. But yeah, yeah, you can. At gas stations in our area, those all shut down at the beginning. Here's what's tough is I find myself thinking like, I'll go in and get. No, you won't. Well, I was confused from some gas stations because when you go in, the whole like, it looks like a casino, the fountain section. That does. I mean, it's amazing. Come on. They You're light winning up. flavors. <laughs> they You're light the up. winner. <laughs> it's amazing. And so it's closed down. And at the one I went to the other week, they just moved beer and put like... Oh. All of that just in front of us, like, no, this is for soda. They're like, no, no, you're obviously going to want this instead. I just drink this beer, kid. <laughs> I thought you're missing it. We oh. wanted a freestyle or a soda thing. Oh, that's too bad. Mm, but they it? thought that would sell better. Yeah. Well, and it probably, at this at this stage, maybe it would. I don't know. But I want a fountain soda. And you know what, Nikki? This leads to the inevitable conclusion that I must build one in my home. Oh, you could. Maybe that that's way, for sale now. That way I <laughs> no longer have to worry about, you know, any kind of disease or whatever, but instead I can just go home and stick my mouth underneath the uh, faucet and hit <laughs> for- the little button and just <sighs> Well, right? honestly, you can still worry if you don't clean it enough just cuz it's at your place. You still need to do what it takes I'll to keep that it. thing clean. I'll clean it as often as I clean <laughs> in, like the bathroom, which is very often, obviously. So, <laughs> all your freezer, no more soda machines. It's weird. What if they never come back? They will. The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the riot podcast. I haven't been watching it, uh, but I'm looking at a ride up here in Variety. Uh, James Corden is back on the air uh, for what he's calling Home Fest, and a lot of. Uh, late night people are doing their shows from home. Yeah. Um, Conan and- started earlier this week, and then Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert. I don't remember with Jimmy Kimmel. I'm not sure. I thought I saw, uh, I probably watched about 15 minutes of Fallon. Yeah. So well done. He did, like, he basically did it with his family. So, like, he went on a, the one that I watched, it was like he went on a walk with his wife, and he had his kids doing his graphics for him. So, they were, his little girls were just drawing things oh, and to things hold up. up. So, like, those were the graphics that would go, genius. <laughs> so <laughs> simple, so accessible, so transparent, like, just great. People were enjoying the simple humor that was coming from shows now yeah. that in the past maybe became more manufactured humor or uh-huh. all about selling, you know, this movie or that. And it was back to actually just being some pure humor. Well, I will tell you that one of the things uh, as a broadcaster and as a person, one, I always tell people the best thing that you can bring to people is yourself mm-hmm. uh, because we all have access to the same internet. We all have access to the same news, the same, whatever the re- really the only thing you have to offer anybody is you. That's all you have, like the your perspective on things, your words. And most of these people are genuinely funny, fun people, uh, but there's a machine there. And it's interesting to see the machine stripped away. And what you found is a lot of these people are pretty likable yeah, just on their own. And I, I think that's very cool. Uh, one of the things I have appreciated about James Corden is he's he's a very 
transparent guy. He seems to be, I mean, not all the time, but I've certainly seen big moments of honesty from him to uh, his audience, and I appreciate that. And one of uh, the things is, again, I didn't see it last night. I'm, I'm looking at the read-up, but uh, he said that the thing that has basically surprised him the most about being home has just been anxiety. He said his anxiety is just huge. Oh, while he has been staying in. Yeah, let me read you his words. He says, I found it tougher than I ever thought I would. I found myself having these incredible spikes of anxiety and sadness. You feel so out of control in it all, and it feels so beyond our comprehension that I found I get overwhelmed with sadness in it all. And, dude, I I will tell you that I I don't think everybody is experiencing that, but I've got quite a few people in my friend circle that are experiencing that. I've got one friend of mine that's an educator. Uh, She's home alone, and uh, she was telling me how she just, like, even though she basically has three hours of work to do a day, she's just completely overwhelmed. That that three hours of work is just like, I just can't. Mm -hmm. I just can't do it. And... You know, you look at it on the outside and there's an element of like, well, that's ridiculous. But when you're in the middle of it, there are things that it's just affecting us in ways that we just didn't anticipate. And I totally get that. Uh, I just want you to know that one of the ways that I'm dealing with that, um, I like in the middle of it all, I have made good choices and bad choices, which I think is probably true of all of us Mm -hmm. um i I, like coping in different ways i sincerely noticed the other day i was like eating something and i was like bro are you hungry it was like no we're eating because we're bored yeah no i did i I just i just had this moment where i was like i am only eating this because i'm bored and whatever and i like i wanted to keep eating but i was like all right bro just put it down and walk away uh like you need to go find something else to do with your time um, and one of the things I'm doing is I'm journaling, uh, you know, I'm doing this show, which is just what we do. Uh, but I would really encourage you if you have never, ever prayed before, if you have never talked to God, you should, um, you should invite Jesus into your circumstances. Uh, the thing that I've found a lot of times is that we, I still feel like our perception of God, like he's a big marshmallow or he's a really mean dad or, you know, all these things. God continues to surprise me with his character and his love. Uh, As I spend time with God, I expect God to criticize, and instead he often comforts. Uh, I expect him to beat, like kind of almost beat up on me on the choices that I've made uh, because I'm ready to do that. And instead, he's ready to forgive and he's ready to redirect in some really great ways. Uh, And my time with God is invaluable to me. If I did not have God, uh, I would not by any stretch of the imagination tell you, that I have it all together or that I'm always doing the right thing. I know that both of those are untrue statements about me. However, uh, my relationship with God has gotten me to a place that I would have never gotten on my own. And that even is in the middle of everything that's happening. If you don't have a relationship with God, how about be honest, do what James Corden did. Be honest with yourself, be honest with God and be open to a relationship with God. Say, Jesus, I want that. I want you in my life. I want you to fill me with your spirit, and I want to have a relationship with you. I, I need some help today. It's a great place to start. The Riot, not, not everyone's, everyone's fan. The one whose idea this was. Radio U. All right, you know the deal. We're having to adapt. We're having to change. We're having to do things a little differently, and it's not all bad. Uh, this is kind of fascinating. I'm reading an article here on Engadget about how, you know, sneaker culture is still a thing. Oh, yeah. Even even when you're sitting at home, you still got to dead stock some sneakers. Well, people still want to buy things. And in fact, sometimes the the ability to say no is a little bit harder. The article, I, no, not article, it was a report I saw on the news last night. They were saying, hey, there are a lot of businesses that when the Trump bucks goes out, they're planning huge sales yeah. to try to get you to, instead of saving that or paying your rent, they want you to buy whatever they'll have online. So hopefully we make the best decision for each of us where we're currently at. Yes. Uh, so uh, this article on Engadget is about how uh, Asics, the shoe company, yeah, they just had a sneaker launch in VR. Oh, in virtual reality? Yes. So they unveiled their new shoes. And, you know, of course, you were able to get kind of up close with them and get a good look at them. Are Asics really in sneaker culture? Or? We don't know. I don't we know don't that know. one. I, I don't know. I, like I you get what I mean to. when I'm asking that. <laughs> it's but, like, well, I don't know. Because you would imagine like, well, of course, Nike is going to do something like this or maybe even Adidas. But, you know, Nikki, my thought was perhaps 
that thought yeah. that we both had that are they a big enough deal for it to matter could just reveal how far out of sneaker culture we, we are. are. I actually know that ASICs are more popular in different countries okay. compared to here, where Nike and others dominate. Right. ASICs, uh, maybe not necessarily here, but yes, in other places. Okay, well, the deal with this ASICs is uh, it's a, ASICs is a Japanese shoe company. Did not know that. And they had their launch yesterday. And you know what? That's kind of cool. So is this the take, did you say, on the Nike Vaporflies? Um, wait, what about the vapor flies? Well, this is their version of oh, like, no, I did not say of that. Their competition for that. Well, now you're going to be able to get up close and personal with them, Nikki, mm-hmm. without ever actually touching them. So one of them, uh, it's its first carbon plate running shoe. Okay. Which is the new hotness, which yeah. means like these are the expensive ones, which means you and I will all have carbon plate running shoes uh, within five in years. In a couple of years yeah. when those, be, you know, when the newer ones start to become on sale. Yeah, that's interesting. But you know what? It just goes to show you, Nikki, I got to get a VR headset oh, again. Oh, you got to. I've got to. You're missing out. I didn't out. even get to go to the ASICs virtual reality sneaker reveal. Now, I mean, you, you've you had three VR headsets in the past, but... Oh, it really is three, it? Isn't is it is three, but I've you sold got... sold each one. You sold each one. You just never bought back into and it. Can, can I just tell you, for those of you that would criticize, uh, I am still in the positive on that. I have still sold my VR headsets for more than I paid for them. So I'm still... Like I basically had long term rentals and made money on the rentals, <laughs> which is what you got. That's why you have to sell them at the right time. You have to sell at the right time. So they had, I think, three new designs or styles that they did in VR. Yeah, and you can, if you've got virtual reality, <laughs> all one of you, you they can have go the check it out. Meta Sprint, which will be April seventeenth. Meta Rise on June twelfth, and the Meta Racer on June twenty sixth. I should probably get in contact with them and let them know that hey, I'm a huge, huge. Z-level celebrity uh, that is going to be running in a 5K later this year. Would you like to provide the shoes? Wouldn't you guys love to send me a shoe? So they'll be about $330, $540, and 300 and well, around that amount. So that's about where it'll be. I mean, we laugh, but you know, at one point, Nike did send us shoes. A couple of times. That's true. Yeah. Then they were like, who are you? No. No shoes. Well, you didn't clock in the time fast enough for them. Apparently not. (laughs) They're like, yeah, just tell us what your mile time is. No, the shoe sent it back. (laughs) You didn't know it. (laughs) This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. Well, it's probably not a surprise to anybody, but that new Ghostbusters movie they were making, yeah, that's not coming out till next year. Oh, when was that one supposed to be? Was it not? I think it was like July or something. So sometime over the summer. Yeah. Um, And then same thing with Morbius. Morbius was Morbius the Living Vampire, which is a... Oh, the one guy. He is technically a Spider-Man villain, Mm -hmm. but I think he's really gone from, like, villain to anti-hero. You know, there's a, it's different. Sure. <laughs> um, and as a result, uh, that's the one with Jared Leto. And so he's also, it's also pushed back. Yep. It's gotten moved back until next year. Uh, so did Peter Rabbit 2 and the Uncharted movie, which I thought they weren't even, like they keep saying they're making that, but I didn't think that was going to end up being a thing. But. I don't know if it'll feel like this after the summer or again, if things change a bit for movie theaters. But I feel like at this point, a lot of the main entertainment features we were looking forward to this year are just going to have to happen next year. Yeah, sure. That's true. Oh, dude, that, uh, well, I mean, it, it makes sense, but the Tom Hanks movie, Greyhound, which, which was, was the, that, that was the world war two submarine movie. Oh, I saw that trailer. I'm, I was way on board for that. That has just been completely removed from the schedule. Oh, they, wait a minute. Well, they what? just haven't decided when they're going to release it. I mean, it's not the oddest thing. Movies, you don't even realize a lot of movies sit for years. Oh, forever. So even that, though we uh, saw a trailer, you don't know that it's common that they sit and wait. Yeah, I watched Underwater, which was the Kristen Stewart, uh, TJ Miller, uh, who's fallen out of favor. That he's, guy? He's in it. Uh, it's an odd choice. Yeah. Uh, he, I'll like him or not. He really He's works in, a in lot that of stuff. He is. And yeah. he really did well in that movie. He was a good choice. Um, but that movie was like three years old, uh, when they finally released it and, uh, nobody Which makes you it. think, is it more than that for making it? Or was it three years old from Who when they knows? were first thinking of releasing it? It also had the girl from Iron Fist in it that played Colleen Wing. Uh, which was the girl who 
was like the uh, martial arts teacher that uh, Iron Fist ended up, you know, falling Not, in love with. But back when they were making it, yeah, that back, was that Back was when that thing. was like a thing. Yeah, so they yeah. were probably like, oh, pick her. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was a thing. But uh, uh, those right, have well, all been moved. Mo- more movie uh, moves for movies. Yeah. Wonder Woman has been moved back to August 14th. Mm-hmm. But they're still planning on releasing that this year. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, Black Widow, Mulan, Fast and Furious, Fast 9 uh, has been, those don't have release dates right now. Uh, no Time to Die has been moved back until November. And That one huh? feels right anyways. That's, yeah, it's Out fine. of all of them, moving James Bond to November was fine. Sure. It, this should all be wrapped up by then. I hope I don't remember saying this. I know. You're like, remember that one time we were talking about and then no movies ever came out? Yeah. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope it's not a thing. I'd pay $20 for uh, almost any of the movies we just mentioned. Because mm-hmm. I'll probably end up paying 15 to see them. Just stream them my way. I'll watch them. The Riot. Just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not good. Wait, isn't that exactly what it means? It's The Riot on Radio U. Okay, so, Nikki, here we go mm-hmm. with a, an article on CNN. You're a huge fan of them. Oh, yeah, I, I love articles. You can't get enough <laughs> articles. I want more, more, more. But actually, you know what? This is pretty good. Um, I, if you had asked me a week ago if I was stress eating, I would have said no. But I totally caught myself yesterday. You know, like at the end of the year when they're like, what was the it term for the year? They do like a look back. Yeah. I feel like stress eating is going to make its way into something a lot of us said this year. So what stress eating is, is that you're under stress and you're comforting yourself with food. And it's a it's a fine line because we've all been there where you're like, hey, I did all this work and I'm going to roar my I'm going to go to my favorite restaurant or I'm going to whatever. Uh, but it comes a problem when you're locked in your house and you're stressed all the time and you're like, well, you know what? I managed to make it to the kitchen. Yeah, I should get something. I'm going to have a num num. Well, they also say, you know, we a lot of us bought a lot of food because yes. if you have a stay at home in place or you're just trying to do your best by isolating, you have more stuff that you wanted to make sure snack wise right. than you maybe normally keep around. And so you find yourself eating things that are. Uh, well, you're just eating maybe too much. Yeah. And so here's a list of things to that you can do to manage that a little bit. And I actually found these. Can we get a bell these... or uh, <laughs> okay. we get, can we get some uh, affirmation or some, uh, if we're agreeing, like we see ourselves doing this? <laughs> All right. Let's run the test. Here we go. There it or... is. That's good. Ready? All right. Control triggers. Oh. So the idea is that if you know that something stresses you out, you avoid it. Yeah. So if it's the news, then... You know what? Less news. But you can't avoid it when it's all in your house. But you like, so you would spend less time with the news uh, than you have been. Mm -hmm. I'm not watching news. That's not what's causing it. I don't think we are. All right. Don't deny yourself your favorite comfort foods. Mm. But when you are having your favorite comfort food, you have to pre-portion the snack. I think that's where our problem is. We're not, we don't know about portion stuff. I mean, we do know, but we don't know during this time. I'll tell you what, at the heart of what we're about to look at is you have to prepare for temptation before it arrives. It's one of the hardest things. You have to have like a plan in place. Uh, And so that's the idea of pre-portioning snacks. Like, yes, I can have ice cream. No, I can't have the whole tub. What? Did that? That just, I'm just saying that's ice cream. Why did you have to say ice cream? Well, I was just thinking about that was, it. That's been my whole thing so like far. It was targeting. Yeah, it was. Target. But I'm out now. We ate all of it, so I don't have any worries. Great. Temptation's Port- gone. Portion control solved. Even though I got an email from one of my favorite ice cream places that said you could drive by and pick it up off the curb. <laughs> We would have never gone with that back before all this. Now you're like, oh, I'm sorry, it's my, Ameri- it's my American duty to get over there and support this business. I know. You're in these trying to, times. You're supposed to support local, and it's like, well, that's local ice cream. I'll do it. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, edit your kitchen. Uh, so keep trigger foods on high shelves or hidden behind other I'll foods. I'll get a stool. It's so fine. No pro- okay. Um, ask I'm yourself. I'm not a child. I can get my own I can food. problem and solve. And I know where I hid it. <laughs> So true. I don't think this is helping. Well, no, the idea is that you won't see it as don't easily. You need to see it. I okay. know where it is. Ask yourself if you're truly hungry. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a good one. That's what that's what got me yesterday. Yeah. Was I was sitting there doing something and I was like, wait, am I even hungry right now? <laughs> and the answer was no. But remember we said it, we're bored, but it feels a lot like hungry. Yeah. Um, take a tea break. 
So instead of immediately reaching for food, drink a cup of tea. Uh, and, you know, you can, uh, a, a nice blueberry tea so or I know, another fruit tea. But I know a lot of people are taking like a, a wine break or like a liquor break. And I didn't that's say just that. as, that's, that's a not lot what of I calories. Said. That's the same amount of calories or more. It's not about the unhealthy relationship you're developing with alcohol. Dude, it's the calories. I'm down in the neighborhood, and if the wind hits and it's recycling day, you could get a contact buzz off. <laughs> The models that are outside everybody's Shut house is like a brewery thing it's going like, on. It's like Nikki went to one of those bars where you just inhale the vodka, yes, or whatever. You don't the even have to drink bar. it. Everybody <laughs> is drinking a oh, lot. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, if you're working from home, take uh, breaks during the day. Schedule virtual meal times with friends so you're not eating alone. That's, oh, that's kind of cool. That's a good time. That's a great idea. Before you do anything, take a deep breath. That's another good piece. Of, like. A centering breath. <gasps> no, not that kind. So you can just open your mouth to shove it all in. In fact, maybe in through the nose, out ah, through the mouth. Ah, that's just better. No, I like the idea about the... Relax your shoulders. We're still centering, Nikki. Try to find some friends to eat meals with virtually, so then you're not always... Even though I know it's usually snacks that are the problem, that's a good idea for... So that a meal feels more like a meal. Yeah, it's a good call. Uh, instead of the, what do they call it, continuous graze. <laughs> Think about having an actual meal. That is totally what we're doing right now, and that that is worrisome. And it can't keep going like this. Oh, no, stop worrying. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Clearly, the riot didn't properly plan. This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. I mean, I don't want to turn this into uh, PSA hour, but I got another one for you. If you're not doing it yet, you need to clean your phone. Oh, they're, yeah, they say that. We should have been doing that already, but now you yeah. really should. Man, I wasn't doing it before. Whatever. <laughs> Do you just use one of the Clorox, yeah, Clorox wipes? Wipe. Yeah. And you know what? I've got them out in my car. And if I, like what I'm trying to get in the habit of is cleaning it off basically right before I go inside um, and then throw it in my pocket, wash my hands. Uh, I've also gotten to, I've got, I just love and now I just have a box of Clorox wipes like out on the counter. <laughs> just carry it with you. Because, you know, they're it's just everywhere. around. What do you got? Ah, this is Clorox. This thing. Well, what I used to do is I would take, you know, every so often just my case off and my phone and I'd wash the case and then I would just rinse off my phone. Yeah. Because it's for the most part. I mean, it's waterproof to that. Yeah. Uh, but now you should be using a disinfectant. Well, what I've been doing is a Clorox wipe and um, I am sure I can kind of see that it like it looks like it's kind of starting to eat away a little bit a part of the case yeah well maybe Uh, wash it off when you're done well i have been uh so what i've been doing is like using a clorox wipe to clean the whole thing and then uh just uh, a wet paper towel basically to try to wipe off uh the stuff your case is dry like our hands (laughs) yeah (laughs) it needs something uh but no that's uh okay here you go they say to use a soft lint-free cloth Mm -hmm. avoid excessive wiping well, meaning don't mean? don't wipe your phone or your case down constantly. All right. Unplug all power sources before doing this. Mm-hmm. Keep liquids away from your device. Don't allow moisture to get into the openings. Avoid aerosol sprays, bleaches, and abrasives. I think there's some probably some bleach in that Clorox I'm using. But you know, the funny thing is, I don't in reality I'm not actually cleaning my phone. And you're I'm supposed cleaning, to do in the case. I'm cleaning the glass over the phone sure. and then the case around it. The phone sure. itself, eh, whatever. Um, avoid spraying cleaners directly onto your vice. And Apple is recommending the use of a seventy percent isopropyl alcohol wipe or Clorox disinfecting wipes to wipe down hard, non porous surfaces. There you go. So you're on it. That's straight from Apple. And I'm an Apple guy now, so I do whatever they tell me whenever they tell me to. That's that's not a bad thing to do. And again, like I said, we should have been doing this or we should continue to do this more often. Yeah. Because our phones get germy. You're supposed to, of course, be washing your hands, but to not forget to wash your phone. In fact... Because it's always in your hands. The one... The one doctor that I saw yesterday, he was like, you need to think of your phones as an extension of your hand. Pretty and I was much. like, man, people already feel that way, dude. It's, well, it's real. You're then washing your, uh, your stuff, just throw it, do it at the same time. Mm-hmm. So uh, just a heads up, wash your phones, brush your teeth, um, you know, 
Make sure you're using soap, especially where skin meets skin. Okay. Um, a good shampoo with a moisturizing conditioner. Still supposed to shower every day just because we got to keep a routine yeah. going. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Don't be afraid of a hot oil treatment. Sometimes it can put back some of the moisture that harsh shampoos and conditioners have stripped out. What are we doing? What? <laughs> what are we doing here? I was just making some recommendations. You, this is just all the recommendations at once. Yeah, they also say you should put on a moisturizer as soon as you get out of the shower. Because ah. the shower is stealing a lot of things from your skin. So you want to make sure you're giving back. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh, no! I missed it! Do it again! You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com. Riot! <laughs>